I'm Emma Coney Bear and welcome back to another episode of Getting Lippy, the home of everything showbiz and entertainment news, brought to you by Slingo. <laughs> Joining me on the show today, straight from Leeds and Chelsea, we've got Liz Benjamin and a journalist angle, Sarah Louise Robinson. How are we doing, ladies, today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Join the fun on Slingo. Enjoy a £50 welcome bonus. Play over 3,000 vibrant Slingo games, age 25 and over. Be Gamble Aware. For more information, visit BeGambleWare.org. Yes, not too bad, not too bad. Been busy. Showbiz news. Go- Showbiz busy, is busy. very, very busy at the moment and all the royal stuff that's coming up as well. So it's one of my busiest weeks at the moment. Exciting times. Um, so Liv. Made in Chelsea is back on the screens at the moment. Made in Chelsea, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, you've been on the show for quite a few seasons now. How do you feel as though like your character has changed from when you? Uh, came you know what? I'd it? love to say I've grown the fuck up, but I haven't. I think I'm just as nuts as I was <laughs> when I first joined. Like, and I've been like, I've done it for like eight years now. I think. Wow, it doesn't seem that long. I know. I, although you can see it on my face, I mean, <laughs> I'm 40 now. Um, but I, I mean, I've loved it. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. I was just a little baby when I joined. Aww. So sweet and innocent. And not now. No, time <laughs> changed. Um, how do you feel as though that the the story storylines like plan out on Made in Chelsea? I think well, it all sort of depends. I I always find when you're in a relationship on the show, mm. it's very different to when you're single on the show. Because mm. it's like I mean, relationships are hard enough it, as it is, but then having to like film about it makes it sort of hard yeah so it goes from like being fun to being crying do you feel as though that other characters on the show as well they might say things to try and stir things up within oh, the relationship question oh oh yeah they're just, that's what they're there for to actually to be, to be honest yeah my, my role was shit stir for a long time <laughs> um but yeah yeah i suppose they probably do Now, you have always had, well, recently, a bit of a, like, a dispute with Maver. Little Maver. Yeah. Are we friends again? Are we not friends? Maver and I have come to an agreement that we will now be civil with each other and not scream at shout at each other. Oh, okay. But that was, honestly, <laughs> out of all the fights I've had, that was probably, like, not the longest, but the most savage, I think. Yeah, that kind of went over a couple of seasons as well. Yeah, a long old time. Do you feel as though that... You know, when you first maybe had a hiccup at the very beginning, it could have been quite easy just to have a little phone call and be like, let's just sort this out. But because it's on the show, it's emphasized, it's hyped up. I don't know, you know, because I actually think, because Maver and I, weirdly, are very similar mm. in the way that I think also we essentially were both just protecting our boyfriends. And Aww. then and then when they finally made up, I was like, well, why the fuck's my apology? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we both sort of like agreed to disagree on what sort of happened. Yeah. But... um. It was one of those things that like was really bad, and then it sort of, we then had Christmas because this was end of last year. Um, that then by the time we saw each other, there was no like anger or anything there. It was yeah. just. So you've also been on Celebs Go Dating. Yeah, just Celebs Go Dating. That was really fun, actually. I was going to say it that. sounds quite interesting. It's like, wouldn't you just love to have two experts to to a nice conveyor belt of men yeah, but and listen, dates, right? Some of them were. I mean, that I had one that was just so shocking. I remember sitting there going, "This can't be real," and it was this bloke called Otto. And I'm convinced he had a fake bun, like as in he'd put like a fake ponytail on. And he was so, I, I, he, I can't remember what he said. Oh yeah, he used like really rank words to describe shagging a girl. And then he told this yeah. ridiculous story. And I was sitting there going, what the fuck am I doing? Anyway, it was, um, other than that one, it was quite joke. How would you get yourself <laughs> out of that sort of situation? I left. Because, oh, oh, you I said left, I was going to the loo and then I left. Yeah, I I did oh, he did and a then swift he, exit. And then he had the cheek to say it's because I didn't want to pay for the bill. I was like, it was one drink. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Where did they find Otto? I from? dread to think, but I hope he went straight back to where he came from. I was going to say, like, it, that would be quite difficult just to kind of get out of a date like that. But honestly, if somebody was talking and like that, oh, no. but, blah, blah, blah. but I'm really not very good at dating. I think I just. Yeah, it's really not. I find it hard. Why so it does it come find it hard? hard? It is hard. I just, I'm just a bit hard. awkward. Or I just end up getting too pissed and then I just don't remember it. And then oh, yeah. It always well. feels so forced, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yeah. 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 Do you, uh, would you be a fan of dating apps? Or not dating apps? So I actually, I did it once. I was living with 
Tiff Watson and her and I were like, it was the middle of lockdown. And we we're like, right, let's organize a date on a park bench. <laughs> so we both organized our dates on two park benches next to each other. Anyway, <laughs> hers was terrible. And mine actually went quite well. And I still speak to the guy now. Oh, like, really? We, yeah, we ended up becoming friends, which Aww. was really nice. But that was the only time I ever did it. Yeah, I, th- I do think it's it's very mechanical at the moment. It's just Last year was all right, you know, testing the app and stuff and just going on dates that way. But then this year, I'm like, I can't even be You bothered. just don't know who you're going to meet. No. And you, yeah. And mm. let's face it as well. Sorry, boys, but you do not take a very good photo. It's also, can I just say, person. I have come across a lot of people I know when I had Hinge and they've all lied about their height. Six foot two, oh you're five foot eight. And I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a funny story. So my, my younger sister, um, she always goes for shorter men. And there's nothing wrong with shorter men. We've all been there, you know. And she, she always said to me, Emma, never go for anybody that says five foot eight because they definitely add two inches on top of that. <laughs> so like, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That really does make sense. Um, now Liv, tell me, you have a company called Jomo London. I'm very interested in this. I should have bought you a bottle. I know, I'm oh, so jealous you know. because- Is it a clothing brand? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> For this one, uh, you actually don't wear any clothes. Um, it is oh. CBD arousal oil. So it's what? CBD, <laughs> basically like C- CBD lubricant. We do more products than that, but our big... So it's a, a friend of mine and I started it beginning of lockdown and then eventually launched it about two years ago but it's yeah it's like cbd lube but does the um, cbd make you sleepy would that not put your vagina yeah. to sleep it's so funny everyone says that no so cbd encourages blood flow which then heightens sensation so it's basically meant oh. to get, make your orgasm better so jomo stands for oh. joy of missing out and jealous of my orgasm oh, oh. i'd like to try some yeah. of that oh, that sounds too. good <laughs> and i think when it comes to, I suppose, when it comes to sex anyways, most females are all up in the head all the time, I think. When it comes yeah. to orgasming as well, it, if you're out your head, then you're more it's pleasurable. It's such so a mind field. I think also, it's not like men, like women, not everyone comes from penetrative sex yeah. or like orgasms from it. And there's so many like different things. But I think yeah. the reason my business partner and I started it was because I feel like it's quite... not. A, I mean, I suppose it is a slight taboo topic to talk about. Like women... We don't yeah. really, and I think you suddenly feel like you're lacking something if you can't orgasm from mm. sex. And like, I mean, honestly, I faked orgasming until I was about, till about two years ago, <laughs> until, I, until I started dating Tristan. Really? That I faked it the first time, and then I said, by the way, that was a lie. And he was like, really? I was like, yeah. How um, would, you, I wouldn't, yeah. I don't know why I did that though. I just maybe thought, I don't know. And I suppose, do you think it, like when you start the relationship, say you fake the first time, and, and then, then it's like, like oh, every oh, time you're gonna do it, you have to, you have <laughs> to fake each time. Keep going for years. You'd be like, yeah, sorry, you know, that one didn't work. You know, sorry about that. I remember there was this one guy that turned around to me, like, and he was just like, oh, um, oh, what did he say? It said something along the lines of, oh, I owe you one, <laughs> as in like I owe you orgasm. I was like, thanks, mate. <laughs> He actually what? said that. Yeah, I mean, oh. uh, yeah, I think it was like because it was just a bit quick, anyways. Whew. And <laughs> and it was like instead of like kind of admitting to it, it was just like I hope you I said I'm fine. Thanks, don't worry. I was like, yeah, thanks, cheers. <laughs> but I suppose it is such a taboo topic. People talking about sex, like you know, I think um, I think our parents' ear and generation, you don't really talk about that. And their sort of generation, it's like- Oh my God, you, you beat my parents. You they date. talk all about it. Can I really talk about it? Okay. The day I lost my virginity, my dad was like, he was like, you're not a virgin anymore, right? I was like, what? And I was like, I'm not having this conversation. Said that. I'm one of five kids. And so the conversation when it's Sunday lunch just gets out of control. We're, we're like a very open family. We're a very I open really family. Like, yeah. But I think not a lot of people are, which I think- No, and my I'd business die partner, if my- oh, Really? I think my mum would die if- and I, You know, I think Honestly, they probably I'm, still think I'm a virgin. I'm, I'm, uh, the middle, <laughs> I'm the middle child. So my older sister, she don't really talk about it. Yeah. She's like married to kids and stuff. Like I'm very vocal with my mum, you know? Yeah, like yeah. oh yeah no I stayed around the person's house. I was like really? I was like yeah yeah yeah. Anyway, so, so I've been very I've always been very vocal to my mom yeah. about men and stuff. But then my younger sister, six years younger than me, she starts having the conversation with my mom about sex. She's like talk to your middle, talk to your older sister. Like just mom's like oh the baby the baby the baby. <laughs> Even though she's like 26, 27, and my mom's like no 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 don't talk to me about it. Talk to talk to Emma about it. She, she'll understand. But yeah, it is. But I think more and more females should be more open and speak about yeah. it. It's not, it's not taboo anymore and it's not just a man that needs to be pleasured. Yeah, and I think guys forget that. Yeah. And I think that's why like when I started Jomo, 
so many guys are like, oh, I've got such a big piece on that you come. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. Like, <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. Um, <laughs> he's got a, wait, it, yeah. that, he's got a big piece. And a, but I don't know why, I don't know why everyone thinks that. Like, I think you just assume sex is good if a guy comes, but you don't really think about a girl. Like, I don't know. I think yeah. It's hard because there's, I don't know, maybe it's like the porn industry. I think I, think I do think men watch a lot of porn and they do think like that. It doesn't look like that. Yeah, it doesn't look, no. And, and I think there's the same. Like that. And I think it's the same with like female private parts as well. Like I think men have watched too much porn and just oh, think yeah. everything's like perfectly shaped. But when and it's young not. kids watch porn before having actually having sex, I think they have this idea of what it's going to be like. Yeah. It is never like that. I have to admit, I've never watched porn. I'll be honest, I haven't either. Which oh, is yeah. re- no, I don't, don't need to. I'm, no, I've, I've got a very creative mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't need to watch anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never really got into that either. Yeah, I just think all the like screaming and shouting. I think to be quite honest, it's um, it's like the little scenarios that they have as well, which is just fucking hilarious. And I'm like, oh my god, this is a little bit cringy. This person's like, oh, I'm here to take you away. Ooh, okay, I'm set. Where are you taking me? <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, so Jomo, so you, you just have like um. CBD, arousal oil, what other like products do you have there as well? So we've got a CBD anti-anxiety roller. Ah. So it's so interesting. I never was really a fan of CBD. Like I, I, was, I never liked to smoke weed, smoked weed or anything like that. But And I never really liked the gummies. It wasn't really mm. my thing. And then suddenly my business partner and I were looking into like the benefit, the wellness benefits of it. And like it's great if you're going through menopause or postpartum mm. and the CBD like it's, it's called a body massage and arousal so you can use it on your skin because it's full of like vitamin E and all wow. this sort of stuff but also for women um, so obviously we have a different pH balance down there to yeah. blokes and their semen I suppose offsets of women's and yeah. so ours is like all natural so if you use like different lubes like flavoured stuff it mm. can really mess things up down there BV thrash yeah, you name it the yeah. so we were trying to make something because we couldn't find anything out there that was just neutral and, mm. and all natural um, so yeah, that's how we sort of came up with it. Oh wow, that's really fascinating. So yes, please, I'll send you my dress. I want yeah. to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah, it's been it's been a bit of a hard time at the moment. We've we've lost so many greats. I know. You know, Barry Humphreys, Paul Grady. Oh, that was so sad. And Len Goodman just yes. recently as well. Yes, I Len, suppose it's quite. Len. I suppose it's quite hard for you that has like interviewed someone and then to see them pass. Like, do you do you feel like you're almost a little bit more attached to them when they pass as well? As and and do you have very, any very much yeah. because you do build up a rapport with these people and yeah. and a relationship with them over the years of seeing them at parties and events and yeah. chatting to them, you know, a lot. And for, for example, Paula Grady was always such a help when. Lovely if you guy. were running a newspaper campaign, he would always lend his voice and support. He was one of those celebrities that you could go to and yeah. he would galvanise other people to to help as well. And Barry, um, I recently interviewed Barry at a at a friend's um, party. She was having like a garden party. It was a lovely night in Hampstead and I'll just never forget how he just rocked up. They, have, like, they had like a... Um, I don't know what the word would be, like an awning over the garden. Oh, um, yeah, like a, yeah. Gaz- a, a gazebo. Like a, it was like a gazebo, that gazebo. was it, yeah. Gazebo. Um, <laughs> so we're all in, all in this gazebo and yeah. waiters serving champagne. It was it was just lovely and twinkly music and, and everything. And he came bumbling over and he was dressed in this pink, pink and green outfit. And he sort of grabbed my hand, kisses to the hand. And it was, I was like, just in, I couldn't believe I was in the company of such a a legend because I'd grown up Mm. watching Dame Edna Average. He was just revered in in our house. And my parents always said what a brilliant comedian he was. And there he was just on form straight away. And he said, oh, I've come dressed as an aphid today. And that was it. It was just, he was always able just to like make these self-deprecating jokes but have you in in just hysterics i could not stop some people just tears. have that star quality they Completely. walk into a room and they just light it up no matter what they say they're just so quick-witted like, yeah he was i mean his wit and paul o'grady had it as well both of those men it, yeah. i don't know if we will see that again they just had this incredible dry oh, i loved wit. it when he thought dermot o'leary was 
Philip Schofield. <laughs> well, we it talked was about one that. Of the funniest thing. <laughs> we talked about that. And Alison that. Hammond just oh, that's like, losing it. Because uh, Philip but Schofield you know came out he, as, yeah, yeah. as gay and he turned around to Dermot and was just like, but, oh, congratulations for going. <laughs> <laughs> it's so impressive. Alison Hammond died. She literally she, she she gave it away. She was incredible. Because she immediately started laughing. Yeah. So she gave it away. But I brought that up to him because oh, it had just, had just recently happened. And he tried it with me as well. He went, oh, I don't know what you mean. And he was trying to sort of <laughs> do the same to me as what he did to Dermot and pretend that he actually thought Dermot really was Philip. And I was like, no, this isn't oh going to wash God. now. <laughs> but that Real was what he was like. Hilarious. He was, I just don't think I'll ever speak to anyone as funny or as no. entertaining again. I mean, he was oh. a true genius yeah. of, of comedy and a trailblazer, really. It is, yeah, that's what I mean. When some of these greats go, we're just like, who Sad. would replace them because they're just so iconic they over are. the years and the generations even the new generation the gen z's the millennials you know they they weren't our time like we didn't see them yeah. as much as like our parents or people like older than us but still they were iconic in our eyes yes you and know? this is it and i just feel like we're gonna there's a massive gap now and normally when people go someone else comes yeah. up to replace them but all my peers we my contemporaries we've all all been talking about this like who does come up to take over from where Paula Grady was or where Barry Humphreys was? Yeah. Where are those yeah. comedic talents? I mean, I know we've got brilliant people like Jimmy Carr and amazing people like that, but they're not quite to that yeah. level. Yeah. You know, they, they had star, star quality, didn't they? Started. Especially Barry Humphreys, he was international. Wow, and and I think, but I suppose it was the TV was different back then as well. Mm. You know, like we only had like five channels. On, on but TV you had to be unbelievably talented to mm. make it. Yeah, it's a lot easier to make it these days Definitely. because there's so many opportunities. You've got TikTok, you've got Instagram. You know, social media's opened so up so many much. different platforms, yeah. um, and the platforms of reality shows mm. as well. Um, you know, but back then you really, really, really had to yeah. just have raw talent to, to get really past all of those executives and TV madness. producers yeah. before you were allowed on screen. Then to win the audience as well, which was the big Well, the that's big true, part. and be loved by them. Every show, we always ask a few different topics which are in the showbiz news or entertainment. And I'm dying to know your personal opinion. Now, moving on to the coronation, obviously, Sarah. This is like mm -hmm. one of the best topics to talk about. You are, you know, the inside lady for this. Yes. Okay, so you, you said previously that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are doing separate things. Meghan's not turning up to the coronation. No. A little bit weird. Yes, It yes. has come out though that she said, oh, I'm I'm celebrating Archie's birthday. Yes, in it's California. Archie's fourth birthday. Yeah. So she's saying she's staying behind in Montecito to be with her son to celebrate his fourth birthday. But she could have brought him over. She My thoughts exactly. It's a family. Lilybet last year and Lilybet had her birthday at Frogmore Cottage. So she could have could have come back and done it here. This this is an excuse. So she doesn't have to she is doesn't it? have to be seen as to um curtsying to Camilla, the Queen, uh, the new Queen, and also she will have to curtsy to the new Princess of Wales. Does she not which like is Kate Camilla? Middleton. Does she not like Camilla? Um, I think that a lot of damage was done through the documentary and through Harry's book towards towards Camilla. Um, oh. Yes, so maybe things were a bit tense and she might not be ready to have those greetings. But Camilla's such a lady. She she would be lovely and warm to Megan and hospitable I like her, and receive To be quite her. honest, Camilla. I adore Camilla. She's great. I she's great quite, Yeah, fun. I do too. A really nice down-to-earth woman. Mm. Really like jolly hockey sticks and, and lovely and down-to-earth and makes you feel you know, like you're on, on the same level. Yeah. Um, there's not really those airs and graces with her. She's she's great. Um, there's but a yeah, couple of no like, love lost. There's a couple of hearsays that the reason why she's not coming is because she wasn't happy with the apology that King Charles sent her. 
Is that hearsay or is it? No, no, no. So that's been leaked um, to the Telegraph newspaper. That was leaked. I'm not going to say where that was leaked from. (laughs) Uh, But (laughs) no, you don't have to try hard to guess, really. So yes, Meghan took it upon herself to write letters to um, Charles when he was still um, the Prince of Wales before the Queen died, following the famous or infamous Oprah documentary where she levelled Mm. this accusation of racism saying that a senior member of the royal family had um, debated how dark Archie's skin tone would be. Um, They never named who that senior member of the royal family was. Um, Well, they've backpedaled on it now. Uh, so this is the Who thing with Harry and Meghan. This is the thing, thing with Harry that's and Meghan is they say these things. But that's such a shocking thing to even suggest. Exactly. And so we saw, for example, when Harry was interviewed by Tom Bradbury last year, um, Tom brought it up to him. Yeah. And Harry backpedaled. He did backpedal. Tom I remember, yeah. And went, we never said anyone in the royal family was racist. But then in the Oprah one, and then somebody clipped <laughs> the two videos together and did like yes. an Instagram post of like, yes. oh, saying it straight out and then back. Peddling. And you saw Tom Bradbury's like, face, yeah. like the, his jaw just hit the floor. He was, I think he thought, is, is Harry off this planet? You know, it was know. almost like you start to question yourself, yeah. like what you've seen, what, what you, you've what, heard. It's what they always say, like in, in crime We were being things. gaslit. L- learn what you, what the real truth is, because you can't remember exactly, what the lies but are. but we were being gaslit yeah. by them. And so that's why it makes it very hard for anyone to believe what comes out of either of the Sussex's mouths, yeah. because they have this habit of saying something it gets all this pick up they know what they're doing mm. and then a few months down the line they pull back and go oh no i i never said that even yeah. though you've heard it them say it fucking filmed like how? yeah so it makes it very difficult for them yeah. for members of the royal family to be trust to trust them yeah. in case they do use something in the future or oh say something in the future i think because they're so happy just to go to the the journalists and talk very openly it's like you couldn't really trust them that much with information Meghan and Harry but no, saying that and I members am... of the royal family don't want to be on their own with them you see for that fear yeah. that there could be recording devices being oh used gosh. what yeah so this when um when the summit Paranoia. happened <laughs> when the summit what? happened um between the queen William, Harry and his father, which was when Harry again blindsided the royal family um, that they were going to be quitting the UK and and moving to initially Canada. So they were ever going to be living in Canada. That was the ploy, wasn't it, to get out first and foremost. That was always going to be LA or Hollywood. Um, The Queen said, no, Meghan's not to be on the call from America because the fear was from William and the Queen that Meghan would be recording the oh the conversation on Zoom. Isn't it? Wow. Yeah, but of course she would record it. Of course she would. Why wouldn't she? Oh yeah. Um, she'd want it for collateral, wouldn't she? For any you know if in they the future. Said anything. Oh my goodness. Yes. Shit goes yes. down. Yes. So it makes it just very hard, you see. But anyway, so to backtrack, sorry, <laughs> circle back as Oprah yeah. would put it. <laughs> Let's circle, circle back to what we originally said. Um, for her coming over to the coronation, it would be socially very awkward. We saw the awkwardness yeah. during the Queen's funeral when they did the walkabout, and I mean, Kate is such a lady as the Princess of yeah, Wales. Kate. She would be very warm to Meghan if she saw her and greet her yeah. and be very courteous and warm to her and, and you know I'm sure Megan could be warm back but I think there is still that um uh, maybe animosity and maybe a sense of resentment maybe from the Sussex side because the mm. thought of having to, to curtsy and bow maybe but a step too far for, th- for them because they have as as Harry has endlessly said not received the apology that they want to receive from the royal family be it William and Charles so because they haven't received that apology that's where the the just get the coronation stubbornness and bitterness let's just get this over and done with like honestly I'm happy to see Harry there I want him and William he's gonna be way down the pecking order though I know but it was he I Mm. it was just so lovely for him to come back like you know Anyways, moving on to another topic, which is completely the other side. Um, Jamie and Sophie, they got married 
I recently. Know. How yes. beautiful was that wedding? She looked unbelievable. <laughs> she was disgustingly gorgeous. She, she looks stunning. She is beautiful though. Isn't she? She gorgeous. really is. So that was their UK civil ceremony. Yeah. I'm sure you're gonna see where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> Spencer Matthews and Vogue William weren't invited, invited. but I remember, because I listened to Vogue's uh, podcast, and she said along the lines that she wasn't able to go to one of the weddings. Could have been- Oh no, she can't come to the next one. Yeah, the the next one. Which is abroad. Yeah. Which is abroad. But Spencer didn't get invited to the UK one. And apparently Jamie's turned around and said, Oh, um, oh, it was just a mishap. Spencer's now said, oh, I'm really offended. They were on a podcast together. Is it the journalists taking words out their mouth, spinning it, making it bigger than it actually is? Or is there a big old, like, Well, I offense? don't know, because I, w- I weirdly watched that clip this morning. I don't know why it came up, but it was, yeah, Hams and Jamie and the Spencer and Vogue talking about it. And I think Spencer was saying that he was actually upset about it. Yeah. He seemed very upset. But Jamie's I'm, his best friend. Yeah, if your but- best friend doesn't invite you, to your wedding and says he's just having a yeah. can I tell you something Jamie and Habs have had so much going on like yeah. they have their pod they ha- I I would understand how that he would have assumed that they were away or something yeah. just because they have been mentally busy I was going to say this like the wedding but you obviously know Jamie is Jamie a little bit like scatty and like you know no you know what he's actually not scatty he's he I was yeah it's surprising because actually he's not like yeah. that I honestly think it's just because they both have so much going on that they didn't really think He's bizarre to think about it though, because surely you you organise like months in advance the civil ceremony, but then Vogue and Spencer were in Portugal anyways. Yeah, I just don't know. I was a bit like, are they really upset about it? Like, surely they've spoken to each other, and Jamie but, would have been like, oh, it's my wedding next week or whatever, and like Spencer not saying anything like, oh, I'm not invited to that. I don't know. It's a weird one. I don't know because I think Sam Thompson then had the. Th- did the same thing. He was like, "Where was my invite?" So I don't ah, know. But I feel yeah. I think it was very small. I think it was very much like bridesmaids and yeah, family it was and quite, stuff. Yeah. But so there were. Did, but Jamie did have groomsmen there, and I think he? that's where Spencer's hurt came in because Spencer said, "I would have flown from the other side of the world for you." I think it would have been an innocent saying. mistake on Jamie's part. I don't know if he's that. He's not that way. He's not. I mean, I don't think he would deliberately not un- like not have him there. Yeah. Will their friendship survive this? Because how can you... Oh, yeah, I oh think God, it will. Because yeah. we, we've got, the, we, we've got the real wedding coming up, which yeah. I'm pretty sure Spencer is going to. As in yeah, the, the next Vogue's wedding. Yeah, not there. But because she's missing Yeah, because she's got her tour of one of her podcasts. I think that's what she was saying. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like it was all kind of like... But I don't know what Spencer's personality is like, but I don't know. He, I, It's almost like he could joke on it a little bit. Like, God, I'm so upset. And, like, people would actually think that he is. But actually, he's like, whatever call him up later yeah whatever Jamie like you're an <laughs> arsehole you know yeah that's it really would what? you forgive your best friend if you were in that situation and that happened to you from your best friends would you forgive them all depends I think if they weren't having another wedding yeah, yeah but because they are having another one okay. or having like yeah I yeah I, I think if it was their only one I would be annoyed but if but because they are do- oh, sorry because they are doing two yes it sort of makes sense yeah I, I think know. I don't know if I would be upset like but then I don't know if I would be the sort of person to forget somebody, to be honest. I'd be like so anal and just... Uh, yeah, because I, I interviewed Jamie not long ago and I asked him about Spencer and the wedding. I'm trying to recall what he said, but I'm sure he said, oh yeah, Spencer will have lots of things planned for me. So it sounded like it was mm. like it was all verified and, you know, unless he was talking maybe about the wedding yeah and not the registry office if Spencer's side. going to the other one then i don't yeah. understand what the big deal is that he didn't go to that he wasn't invited to the uk one because probably the people that go to the uk one isn't going to the spain one so kind of get over it and suck it up <laughs> no? yeah but i just, you know I just I mean? got the impression from jamie that spencer was would be playing a part mm. in the whole day isn't he meant to be marrying them or did i just make <laughs> that up I don't know why don't know. that's ringing a bell for yeah, me as well. I mean, well, I would actually is. have no idea, but I think he is. Well, if he is in Spain, then I'll get over it that you didn't go to the UK one then. Yeah, I, 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 just, I think, I think. I mean, Jamie was was very careful, like, what he said, because he didn't want to give anything away. Um, mm. But I did get the I impression think from an, him. That's, that's in an article somewhere, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe someone else has made that up. Yeah, he, he, he gave the impression that Spencer was playing a... a you know, mm. a, a role, a, you know, a good, a strong role. Like, Yeah, I don't know. 
There's also at the back of my head, which I'm sure it's not the truth, but because I don't think they are the characters to do it, but people like to do things, to say things, so they get a lot of press and both of them have podcasts. So it could be a good little story to slot in there to be well, like, it's very oh. cynical, Emma. But you know, it's happening. You know, you know it's I know true. what you mean. I don't but think, I don't I don't think, think it's it, those two. No, I don't think it, that's I don't true. Think it doesn't strike no, me no, no. And, I, and if you've ever listened to Vogue's, um, oh, what is it? Uh, my therapist ghosted me. Fucking hilarious podcast. I love, I love so Vogue. So good. And I love her like, podcast. She it's doesn't brilliant. sound like that's the sort of person. If anything, she kind of runs away from the journalist. So. Join the fun on Slingo. Enjoy a £50 welcome bonus. Play over 3,000 vibrant Slingo games, age 25 and over, in Gambleware. For more information, visit begambleware.org. Every show, we always ask you guys, have you got any dilemmas for our guests to answer on the show? Now, we've got a couple. I'm going to read out to you and I'm dying to hear what your opinions are. The first one goes, I'm currently dating two guys. And when I say dating, I mean exclusively. Neither of them know that I'm dating each other, dating other people. At the same time, I know if it was the other way around, I would be a little bit confused and annoyed. However, the issue is I don't know which one I prefer. Uh, I really like them both, and right now, I just couldn't pick one. And at this point, this is not the case of going on a few more dates to decide. Please help, as I don't want to keep stringing them both along. What should I do? Oh, my God. Introduce them individually to your parents. To get your parents <laughs> to tell you. I would just do that. Oh, my God. That's oh, brilliant. Yeah. It's parent approval important oh, to you. Oh, yeah. You've got to be joking with my parents. They know Yeah, same. Hell. Yeah, Who I would just do that okay. and then see who they pick. And then it might help your decision or your mates. Because I always think, you know, when you really That's like someone, brilliant. and then you sort of introduce them to your friends, and they're like, "Wow, they're a bit peculiar." Then yeah. you're like, "We'll see you later." But then, if you <laughs> my mum knows straight away, first five minutes, yeah. she's like, oh, "I think they nah. would know." I would do that. Yeah, I think she should just keep stringing them along. Why not go out with both? Or just have a threesome. I mean, there's a mixed bag of things. Throuple. <laughs> we love that word. Throuples are the yeah, in thing now. Look at Dave. I'm not sure hey. why that would be a throuple. Personally, I don't know how you could do that. Like. What? date two people at the same time oh, like easy. intimately I first of all they've obviously don't the they've got time. far too much time on their hands because i won't be able to fit it all in the schedule then i would be paranoid that somebody will uh see me with the other person and then the texting and the calling yeah. like the anxiety levels were calling one the other I, did it, I did it for oh. a few months but it was three but i kept it going none of them knew about each other three did you three, three men. yeah three Friends. Yeah, I do it. yeah. Uh, that was when I was very young. But I couldn't be intimate with two different people at the same time. Like for me, I j just couldn't. Oh, but yeah, going intimate back... with them ex at the same time. All three of them in one about... room. Yeah, yeah they didn't imagine? know about each other. <laughs> no, but I but dated. Yeah. I dated. Wow. Three guys. So I'd have to like make sure each I would night be I had an excuse about that, for though, why I couldn't them see them. The wrong name. I'm trying to think what I would yeah. actually do. I didn't know that was. Yeah, it's hot. yeah, it's weird. If you if you like them both the same, surely you have to like one more. Well, this is yeah, that's what happens. If you one person to. stopped talk, if one of them stopped talking to you the next day, who would you be more upset about? There would be something, but then it could be completely different. Like one person's like really kind, is really good at communication, and the other one is just like a sex beast, and it's all like Ugh. yeah. So you then actually, you're best of both worlds are just keep them both. Yeah, don't, exactly. don't ever tell either one yes. of them. <laughs> a, a live good, a double life. A good <laughs> friend of mine said to me once, she was like, "You need men for different needs." You're not going to find everything in one ma man so you should date multiple men to okay. serve different purposes this is where i'm going all wrong yeah. i'm like loyal as fuck i'm like loyal <laughs> don't speak to anybody but then else i'm trying to think if a bloke did that to me and it was me and another girl yeah how would you feel absolutely out of the question but most men have well that's the problem have. they do it anyway so actually yes like, yeah. it's just part of the course well, I think, to be quite honest, it's very hard for men to turn around and be like, hi, would you like to be in a relationship together? For two men to do that and to call them the girlfriend, I mean, that, they're rare. Men don't do that anymore. It's a situationship. Mm. Well, yeah. Yeah. That would be strange. <laughs> but I think she, it sounds like she feels pressured to mm. make a decision and choose one of them. 
but it sounds like she's not she's not ready. I think she should keep to going. Choose. So she you, should just keep, keep going, going until one fucks up. And then, and then you the back both of them aren't the right ones. So yeah. she should just enjoy it while it lasts. She should throw a few more in there just for fun. Yeah, and add some more. That's yeah. that's my <laughs> advice. Oh my goodness! Oh, I had a great time when I, when, I, when I went through that. It was fun. Oh god, yeah. I'm going so wrong here, guys. Maybe I need to date more people. Um, yeah, but what something's going to happen like there's always drama that happens like surely something you know it's like the universe always calls out like oh which person you're supposed to be with and like i don't know maybe you won't be end up with either of them maybe something else comes along well yeah that's that goes back to what i'm saying so i think she's not really sure about either of them which is why she's dating both mm. so she's sort of dating both so, and then yeah, probably so someone my, new my, maybe neither one of them yeah will be the right one for her well, yeah, I suppose so. If you can't pick out of either one of them, then maybe it's no. not. So if she's happy to just, if she can manage it and <laughs> handle it. it. If you can manage it. It was getting hard for me. I mean, I, I'm trying to think how long it lasted, but it was like three or four months. It was a very, very long time ago when I was very young. Um, you could get away with those things then. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it would be hard now how with social did you media. Manage it? Would you? Would you? Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Social media, but social media wasn't invented then. Oh that's how long ago. Yeah, you, oh, that's probably why you could get away with it. That's why you could get away with it. But we just um, had MySpace, so that was it. <laughs> Facebook how could you was fit everybody on? Surely you wouldn't be able to see them each week. That would be difficult. It was. It was hard. I sort of well, because I was a trainee journalist at the time, um, so I sort of juggled. Two lived like not far from the town that I was living in, mm. uh, and the other one was about forty miles away. Oh, that's but all right. they all had busy jobs themselves because they were uh. they were older, like they were in their thirties, and I was in my early twenties. So it was sort of it was easier, I think, because they had busy lives yeah. anyway. So I'd just say Wednesday I'd see one for dinner that night, and then just say to the other two I had to attend council meetings. <laughs> Sounds quite so, fun, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't see them. <laughs> and then sort yeah. of like manoeuvre it around. But mm. it did start to become tricky because one started to really, really like me and was like, I want you to meet my mum and dad. Oh, my God. And oh my he was like, and well, then, no, like, that's when you back out. And, go, Sorry, and, but no. Yeah, and he was like, you know, you're my girlfriend. And I was like, what? And so he oh, like geez. just sort of, he moved me into like girlfriend spot. Oh, geez. Yeah, so that became hard. Oh, wow. Um... Yeah, but when they I kept step it up a notch. Going, and then I, 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 I'm trying to think now, back then, like quite a few people were a bit funny about it. Probably just jealous, really. But like, oh, you can't, you know, you're going to have to choose one of them. So that's how I sort of whittled it down. Anyway, I made, I think I made the wrong decision. I think there was one time last year where I dated two guys. Oh, yeah, I get dated two guys at the same time. One person... I liked both of them. One person was, I was intimate with, but kind of knew that it wasn't going to go anywhere. But then the other person wasn't intimate, but it was like, like enjoyed their company of just relaxing and chilling. But yeah, but even then I got paranoid. But then I was like, I'm not doing anything wrong here. Nothing's been said it's exclusive. But even though here it says it's exclusive, but then I still felt really guilty and I've had to, you know. I did when I when he was like, one of the guys was saying about his feelings and mm. meeting his parents. And I thought, gosh, he thinks this is a lot more. But I would get confused. Than what it is. Because I would be with one person and think about the other one. And then I'd be with that person thinking about that. I'd be like, oh, I can't be dealing with this. Oh, you just compartmentalize. Oh my God, that's another <laughs> I couldn't do it now. I'm an no, old bag now. I, I think that's do it. It. Um, but back then, your twenties are for doing those things. That's what you should be doing in your twenties. You should what be doing in my twenties, living yeah. your life, and because it helps you find out what you want, yeah, and what suits you and what works for you. Yeah. And it's something to look back on and smile when you get older. <laughs> so it makes me laugh now. The memories, yeah, it's good to have. It is good to have good memories. <laughs> Moving on to the next dilemma. Okay, um, okay. It's titled uh, "Being Back on the Dating Scene After a Long Term Relationship." I was in a five-year relationship that ended six months ago. It's taken time, but I feel completely ready to move on. However, the dating scene terrifies me. I've been out of the dating game for so long. Do you have any advice on how to ease back into the single, fun dating life? It terrifies me as well. It is yeah. scary out there. 
It is. It's hard. I don't. I don't really put myself out there now, um, mm. because I, as I said earlier, and I find it quite. It's 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 a very forced situation, going to meet someone who is effectively a stranger, and then you're having to make conversation with them, find out about them. They obviously. I know find straight out, away within the first five seconds if I'm going to like this person or not. I feel the energies, and I'm like. Mm. Do you? Yeah. See, I've often and you dated. know, I've got to the point now where I'm old enough that by the conversation on texting, I'm like, yeah, we're going to work out or we're not going to work out. Yeah, no? I, I don't know. I, I, I need to listen more to my gut instincts. I've made a lot of probably errors in the past of not feeling sorry for people, but when they're being really into you going, oh, okay then. <laughs> but actually, I'm thinking I don't really like you at all. <laughs> yeah, see, and then find myself in a relationship with them no, going, how the hell did I get here? No, <laughs> See, unfortunately, no, I think I would just turn around and be like, I don't fancy you. Like, That's my, how I my, am now. My time is, t- I don't have enough time yeah. to be wasting on you, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. What advice would you give? Fuck knows. Honestly, I wouldn't, I actually wouldn't even know. I would say date a lot. That's one. Date thing. a lot. Date a lot. This is where lockdown dates were actually better because mm. it, you had five minutes in the park. No, it's like <laughs> you're gonna show up somewhere. Yes. Oh yeah, that's it. And it's like yeah. don't do dinner on the first don't date. Don't do dinner. Or I was actually prefer to do it as a group. Be like, oh, a few of my friends are going here. Why don't you come? Yeah, yeah, yes, come like, with your friends. Would they fit in? Yeah. And would yep. your friends like? Because the pressure of going by yourself and then like you're sitting there and after five minutes, if you know it's I not right, you've got to be like. People watching me eat anyways. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drink. I always think drinks is first. first I do it with date. a group of people to say a group. Of, yeah, I would yeah. do that. Just softens the blow. And then also if it's uncomfortable, you just get your mates to be like, time to fuck off. Yeah. It's <laughs> not quite like that, but you know. But you could, yeah, you could easily get out. Or you go in with like, yeah, I can see you for a couple hours, you know, and then if it's nice, then it can be extended longer. So that's always yeah. that. Um, I also think date as many people as possible and go in with the attitude of, you might like this person, but don't see it as a future if you get what I'm trying it's to say, scary. if I you was... come out of a long-term yeah. relationship, I'm not saying it it will never, it's more of a case of, if you're going to go in and be like, oh, I really like this person, oh yeah, I hope it's going to go somewhere, after a really long-term relationship, and it doesn't work out, you're going to set yourself back up and yeah. just be really upset again from the get-go. Mm. So, what did I used to always say? High standards, low expectations. That, <laughs> I like that yeah. analogy. Yeah. Take High that with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do need to still start dating on it, again. <laughs> I do, but it's just you get so busy, don't you? Find like everyone's lives these days is 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 yeah. really busy. I did try one of the apps, but which one? It was disastrous. Um, Bumble. Oh no, I'm not. But you can't. The, you, you would speak to these people. Then when you would say, "Are we going to be?" The female has to speak first on that. Yes, oh, but no, you'd no, make no, conversation, no, and no, then no, they would bring you yeah. along. If you match with someone and they don't message you first, then fuck no, 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 no. Oh, it was right. absolutely yeah. bizarre. I only stayed lasted a few weeks on it. I just thought this is mental. Um, so yeah, I'd message them. They'd message back, uh, message again, and you think, okay, they seem reasonable. They s- seem nice. Whether they look like they do in their pictures, I don't know. Um, so then you'd be like, okay, let's take this to real life. Let's meet up for a drink. D- silence. They g- go, delete, gone. Bizarre. Like they didn't exist. Just now, disappeared off I've, the profile. I read a lot so I think a lot of these people have got girlfriends or married and just uh, yeah. gone for an ego validation. Yeah, definitely. Probably sounds about right to be honest. They probably do. Yeah. I read a lot of things in terms of like female, uh, feminine energy and dominant energy. And this whole thing of like a male needs to be the dominant energy, but then the whole Bumble app it is that work female is females branch now, which means that you you basically taken the role of the dominant energy, and, and that's making, not who I am. And you're making the, yes. the male a feminine energy. So then, if you're then asking the guy for a date once again, you're taking control of that, me. and then it's really hard to then switch the like the. Po- po- polar rock, the you know, the, the, the line, you know what I mean. Parameters, yeah, the, the parameters, the parameters, yeah. Such. That's um, how I felt. So, yeah. It just, it, it was, it was just felt wrong to me. It was uncomfortable because yeah. I don't chase men. That's not what I do. <laughs> they chase me. So it felt yeah. strange. Like I had to be the one to no, instigate. Extremely uncomfortable. And then wait for them to it's come like back. Like Bumble and... is the app for shy guys. If you want a shy guy, then go for it. Or maybe that's why they didn't want to meet in real life then. They just wanted to talk mm. talk over the app. They were happy to do that and then 
the suggestion of meeting up, they disappear. Yeah, so I think the advice going back to this would just be like, go and just talk to loads of people and go on dates and not think of anything as a big deal. And you'll probably bump into somebody down your local bruiser and then you fall, you know. I think meeting people in person, I think we're going back into the olden days again where it's just like yes. people want to meet in person rather than the app. Yeah. Because, you know, you used to meet people just in clubs. Like, where do you meet them these days? <laughs> Listen, if I met someone in the back of raffles, I never want to see you again. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I need to get myself down to Bougie again. I actually wouldn't again. even know. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, Bougie, that's where they might be hanging out. But then you have all that drunken <laughs> conversation and then you wake up the next day going, who the hell did I give my number to? <laughs> um, yeah, that happened to me recently. I don't even know. I still get text know. messages. I'm like, I've got away. Flock. <laughs> I got flock myself on nights out. I'm like, don't have me. That's why I'm a DJ because I literally stand behind the deck so I can cop. Oh, I love myself. that you've got your like, booth. Oh, it's great. I'm like, mm. You're like, get out my booth. Yeah, and if they're really uh, annoying, I can ask for a security like guard. <laughs> I'll be your booth, bitch. Come and keep, <laughs> keep watch. That's <laughs> yeah, madness. But yeah, I don't know how you can, yeah, meet people naturally now. People do live busy lives, and not so it's many hard. people go out for food or how it used to be like every friday or saturday you go down to a it's bar hard or something. in london you just don't it's london is like the loneliest place mm. it really is because it's just so hard to meet people yeah but. thank you so much for joining me and thank you for watching another episode of getting lippy tune in next time for more celebrity gossip news showbiz and everything in between <laughs>